Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on vectors. Now in previous videos we talked about how we can multiply one vector with another vector uh, via what's called a dot product. And in this, uh, in this presentation I'm going to build on that and talk about projection of one vector on another vector. Uh, so I'll just um, discuss two types of projections and I'll do an example. So let me share my screen with you and uh, we can start. Okay, so just to refresh your memory, in previous videos I talked about the dot product of two vectors where you multiply the, compo the corresponding components together and you add up the, uh, the products to form some number which is known as the dot product. And we also could relate the dot product with the product of lengths of vectors and the cosine of the angle between those vectors. So um, this is sort of the relationship between the dot product, lengths, and an angle between the vectors. Okay, so we're going to build on this and we're going to talk firstly about scalar projection. Okay, so when we're modeling with vectors, a common question is, uh, what is the force of a given vector in a particular direction? So for example, if I have, say, um, a vector A and, say, a vector B, a good question here is, and if A is a force, let's say, how much of this force is being directed in the direction of the vector B? Okay, how much of the, the force associated with the vector A is being uh, distributed or um, uh, being in the direction of that vector B. So to answer this question we're going to first talk about scalar projection of one vector on another and then we're going to talk about vector project projection of one vector on another. So let A and B be vectors. We define the scalar projection of a vector A onto another vector B we denote it by this kind of um, uh, uh, symbols, okay? And this is what it is. It's the dot product of the two vectors divided by the length of B. Now, that might seem a little bit strange here, but um, if I show you this, right, from, the pre from a previous video, we can basically get this from up here. If we take... The, the length of A to the other side, then this and this will be the same. So basically what this scalar projection is, it's the length of the vector A times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Okay. All right, and theta, is but the angle, is between 0 and pi here. Okay, so that comes from cos theta equals the dot product of the two vectors divided by the product of the lengths. So so it's just rearranging, you just get this. Okay, so geometrically, what, what does this signify? Well, let's consider the following diagram. Suppose that I've got, say, a vector here, and say, a vector here. Now, I can draw in a little right angle triangle, just going to the head point of A and then drawing a little line segment in to B or to the line that um, uh, contains B and I've got a little right angle triangle there. Now the angle between the two vectors say is theta and what this scalar projection measures in this case, where the theta is between 0 and pi on 2, is this length here. Okay? 
So I know with a little bit of trig that the cosine of this angle is opposite over adjacent. Uh, sorry, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's d over the magnitude of a. So if I rearrange that, I'll just get the following. Okay, and that is just S sub B of A. Okay, so here theta is between 0 and pi on 2. So what happens then if, say, A was a little bit differently positioned? Okay, let's say if... Um, B was like this, and A was like this. Okay. Well, I can still construct a right angle triangle going to the tip of A, and then looking at the line that B lies in, just going down here, okay, let's consider that length, or that length there. Now the angle here, theta, is going to be bigger than pi on 2 but less than pi, and let's say, you know, you talk about this smaller angle alpha. All right, well, if I want to compute D again, it's just this, and alpha is pi minus theta, okay? And I can simplify this down to negative uh, cosine theta, okay? How do I do that? Well, you can do it a number of ways. But one way is to do it this way. Okay, sine pi is 0, cos pi is negative 1. So this is negative length of A times cosine theta. Now remember, theta here is between pi on 2 and say pi. So cosine theta will be negative here, so this thing will be positive, so it really is the length there. So let's switch this around. This equals this and it's negative of that length d. Okay, so let me give you a little bit more insight into, into what's going on here. You can see here that the um, scalar projection of this on this is going to be positive. Okay, and in fact, if we get the closer A gets to B by making the angle theta smaller, the larger the scalar projection. Okay, and the, 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 you can see this one's sort of not pointing really in the direction of B at all. And if we were to rotate that a bit more, the, the number would get larger and negative, okay, more negative. All right, so you can kind of think of this scalar projection as a guide to see how well vector A lines up with vector B. If they're pointing in opposite directions, well, you're going to get a negative number. If they're pointing in the same direction, you're going to get a positive number. Okay, and if they're um, uh, at right angles to each other, they're go you're going to get zero for the scalar projection. Now another way of thinking of this is imagine the sun's up here, okay? This is like a shadow. This this, this part here is like a shadow that the vector casts on the or the vector A casts on the vector B. Okay, and this would be the shadow here. All right. Okay, so that is the scalar projection. But we can build on the scalar projection by talking about um, the vector projection of one vector A on another vector. Now, the, the, the scalar projection is just a number. 
Okay, this is just this will just give you a number. What happens if you want a vector? Well, we are going to define the projection of vector A on vector B through this. Now, this can be sort of unwrapped a little bit to um, align, or at least to be related to, with our previous slide. Okay, if I take out a factor of the magnitude of B there and shift it out, then I have the following. This is just the scalar projection of vector A on vector B times by a special vector. Okay, what is this? Well, this is a special vector where the vector B has been divided or uh, divided by its length. Okay, so this now is a unit vector by unit vector. I mean the vector has length one. That points in the direction of the vector of the given vector B. Okay, if you take any vector and divide it by its length, the length of that new vector is always equal to one. Okay, so let me um, show you what we're calculating here now. Suppose again, I've got a vector B there, and I've got, say, a vector A there. All right, so let's draw a little right angle triangle in like we did before. What we're doing now, at least in this picture, is taking that length there and multiplying it through by this unit vector to form a new vector, okay? In the same direction as B, but with this uh, length, or the absolute value of that length. Okay. Right, so in the first case, we get a number, a scalar. In the second case, we get a vector. So let me do an example, and I'll bring all the ideas together. So calculate the scalar and vector projections of this vector on this vector. Okay, so um, let's calculate the scalar projection, and we can then use that to compute the vector projection. Okay, so we've got two vectors in R3. So using the um, uh, the um, notation that, that I've introduced, by the way, this notation isn't that common. It's something that I've just thought up. The S stands for scalar. So that's that's what I wanted to sort of um, uh, get out of this, this notation. All right, it's just the dot product of the two vectors divided by the length of B. So we have to compute this and compute this and then put them together. So let's take our two vectors, remind ourselves what the dot product is. Okay, when you're multiplying one vector by another vector with a dot product, you just multiply in a component-wise fashion and you add up. So it's five times one, plus zero times negative three, plus one times negative two. Okay, well that'll be zero, that'll be negative two, and that'll be five. So I'll get three. Let's work out the length of B. How do I compute the length? I take the components, I square them, add them together, and take the square root. Okay, so 1 plus 9 plus 4, root 14. So, I just take the dot product, which is over here, divide it by that, the length, and I'll have my 
scalar projection. Okay, that's pretty easy. The next thing we want to worry about is the vector projection. Okay, so we've already calculated this part. All we need to do is take the vector B, uh, divide it by its length, and then multiply these two things together. So let's go with this. So I'll just write, write it all out because um, so it's uh, this. Oops. Okay. So this is already computed up here. I already know this, and I know the vector b. So. Okay, uh, that is going to be root 14. So instead of dividing, I'm just going to multiply by 1 on root 14. And uh, the vector is up there. Okay, so here I've used part 1. And so obviously the square roots are just going to cancel off. And here is the projection of the vector projection of vector A on vector B. Okay, now some books, some people, they don't, you know, they when they talk about the projection of one vector on another, it's really helpful to actually ask them, do you mean the scalar projection or the vector projection? Okay, so that, that's quite important. Okay, so there are some examples involving the projection of one vector on another. We've talked about the scalar projection and the vector projection. So what can, we, what can we do with these things? Well, in forthcoming videos, I'm going to show you how we can link these ideas of projection with geometry. We'll be finding distance between points and lines, um, and I hope you can join me for those presentations. If you have any comments, any questions, put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.